People love crossovers. Marvel fans live to see what cameo characters will show up in the next movie. Smash fans crave getting some obscure characters from a 40 year old game as DLC. And even Disney Channel fans could not wait to see the crossover of a lifetime, that's so sweet life of Hannah Montana. All everyone wants is to pull their favorite characters together, see how they react, what kind of crazy antics would take place, and most importantly, who would beat the hell out of each other. So for games like Battle Stadium D.O.N. or J-Star's Victory Versus, you can bet your left nut that anime fans are all over it. And it's not going to settle that argument of whether Goku can solo their entire universe, but it's fun seeing it play out in video game form. Which brings me right back to one of the most recent anime crossover games, Jump Force. The game to celebrate 50 years of Shonen Jump. Bringing together the worlds of everyone's beloved characters once again and having them fight it out. We have all the classic series like DBZ, Rurouni Kenshin, and Yu Yu Hakusho. Some more obscure stuff like City Hunter and Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai. And then even the newer series like My Hero Academia and Black Clover. With this much fan service packed into one game, how bad could it possibly be? Well, to start off, the main story of Jump Force is like a reverse isekai. Instead of you, the player, getting transported to the different Shonen Jump worlds, the worlds from Shonen Jump collide with the real world. Which gives us some odd stages where we'd fight in Times Square or in front of the Eiffel Tower, but with an added twist. So we would see pieces of these different anime just randomly in the real world. Or even seeing these monuments from the real world being transported to the Shonen Jump worlds. Like the Valley of the End statues being next to the Golden Gate Bridge. But that stage does look kinda tough though, I won't even lie to you. You always see people talking about which anime universe they would want to be transported to because it would be fun to be in that setting. The real world is usually a place that people want to escape as we delve deeper into things like manga, anime, and movies. So it's a bit lame having the setting be more of a crossover between Shonen Jump and the real world rather than having a crossover of these different anime worlds with each other. And they do have some themed areas in the hub of the game, but it doesn't feel very authentic walking through this dull looking base into a small beach each made to look like the world of One Piece. Because you walking through this base to go these areas does not really have a whole lot of immersion. It just feels like you're walking from one end of the base to the next. You're not really visiting these worlds, you're more so visiting an exhibit in this base that is based off of those worlds. I wish that the story would have had us jumping from world to world, meeting these characters one by one and building a team of heroes to defeat the enemies. Because imagine this, you're the main character walking around with a Shonen Jump magazine and as you open it, you can teleport to all these different worlds. You could even have these characters being transported into each other's worlds, creating chaotic and interesting situations. And even the art style could change as you enter each world world to better match the original anime. The more I think about this idea, the more it feels like I'm explaining what the anime version of Kingdom Hearts would be, and I'm not really mad about that. Even using that as an example, I think it would be odd if Kingdom Hearts did what Jump Force is doing. The game would be so much less magical if Sora was traveling through his own world as these Disney characters and settings just collided into it. You would miss out on one key thing when you step outside of the wonder of these fantasy worlds. It's the magic of entering a whole new place that you could never explore before. Being able to interact with these different characters and then you are the person who's stepping into their world and their life and their struggle. Because in Jump Force, I would have loved to visit the 12 Zodiac Temples from Saint Seiya. But it would be so much better if they weren't awkwardly floating around the Eiffel Tower. Because some of these settings and monuments would actually be interesting to see in other worlds. Instead of Big Ben just being in the middle of Konoha for no good reason, why not have Frieza's ship crash land in the middle of Konoha instead? And then instead of Frieza just attacking regular ass humans, you'd become part of a war between the Leaf Village and Frieza's minions. 
happens. That is something that we could only see in a Shonen Jump game and it's one of the main reasons that Jump Force makes me so depressed. What I will say without apology is that the realistic, moist looking skin on these anime characters was a horrible idea. Looking back to when I was a kid, even before I knew what the word anime meant, I would always find myself flipping through TV channels and stopping whenever I saw these cartoons with this detailed animation style. I'm sure just about any anime fan would rather see these characters animated closer to the original anime than to see this. And sure, we have things like the most recent Loop in the Third movie which steps away from the 2D animation that we all know and love. But with that being a well animated movie with all the expressions and movement feeling more natural, it's easy to forget that those are 3D models. The same can't be said about Jump Force though because these characters don't carry the same vibe vibe and aesthetic that their original manga and anime have. Just take a look at some of these characters. Deku in particular looks so odd with his massive dinner plate eyes looking straight into my soul. Then you have Yugi, and I can't help but feel like I didn't need to see a more realistic version of his hair. It makes me that much more confused about how long it takes him to style that thing, and I just cannot stop thinking about that. And Lord knows that we shouldn't bring the terror of realistic Hisoka into the eyes of innocent children. It shouldn't take a rocket surgeon to figure out that anime fans love anime for the aesthetics and the unique art styles. So when you do have the option of making cel shaded graphics like in Dragon Ball Fighters or Hinokami Chronicles, it doesn't make sense to not do that. I understand wanting to stand out from the crowd, but you'd think they would try something better than this. A few years ago, I came across a mod project that was starting to turn the Jump Force models into cel shaded models. Unfortunately, I can't even find the person who created it or any of the images I saw years ago, so it was probably taken down by Namco Bandai. It would have been nice seeing the game with a full roster of cel shaded models, but unfortunately, it just wasn't meant to be. Although it doesn't seem to matter too much since the game is pretty much dead anyway. Depending on when you see this video, the servers may already be offline making this a single player game or at the very most a couch co-op game and it was already taken off of online marketplaces as of February 2022. Judging from what I see from other fighting game fans, the gameplay here isn't terrible in Jump Force. So it's possible that the choice of graphics was a major reason why so many people stopped playing it completely. And I'm not going to pretend like I'm a god with fighting games, but even talking to the friends of mine who will play fighting games on the regular, they tend to stay away from arena fighters like these. Me, well, I spent enough time playing these anime arena fighters so I'm not too turned off by them. Jump Force is not a total button masher and the mechanics for getting out of combos and continuing combos leaves a bit of room to play around with. Special moves may be a bit cheesy from character to character, but it's something to be expected from a game like this. Then adding your own created character into the mix makes things even more spicy since you can swap your moves around pretty freely. It's a dream for making a character that has all the best moves, but I'm sure that shit would get messy in competitive play. That reminds me, do you guys remember that the year this game released, it was a nominee for fighting game of the year? Although I, I can't really say that's saying much because I mean, there weren't a lot of fighting games to choose from during that year, so uh, I guess it was a shoo-in to make it. But I think the worst part of the gameplay might just be the visual effects. Now personally, I think the visual effects are pretty cool at times, but in the heat of battle, they can also be really distracting. It's like every little attack has its own little fireworks show, so I can see why people who are in the FGC will be annoyed by it. I do wish that we could have gotten a much larger variety of characters added to the game, but hopefully the very next Shonen Jump game will fix that problem. Just seeing the different kinds of mods out there that add new characters like Tanjiro or Gojo makes me excited for what we might see in the future. Hell, I was shocked to see that they even put a character like Ryo Saiba in this game in the first place. Not only is he from a series that a lot of people just have not heard of before, but the dude just brings a gun to a fight against gods and he puts in work. So yes, in conclusion, it does bother me that Jump Force could have been much better than it is, but at this point, the game is already as dead as it gets. Well, it will be soon. They'll shut down the online soon, and as it stands, you can't even buy the most recent season pass characters if you wanted to. All I can hope is that the next Shonen Jump Celebration game gets it right this time. 
put another developer on it, maybe change the style of the gameplay and we might have a very decent game on our hands. There's one game in particular that has a style that I think could be a good example for what they can do for the next game, but we'll talk about that a different time. For now, let me know your thoughts on Jump Force and its impending demise. And let me know if you would like to see a Shonen Jump game that is more like Dragon Ball Fighters or something different in the future. I would love to hear all your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this one and I will see you all in the next video.